before it's too late. Though serious research into frogs is relatively new, scientists have already made some startling discoveries. In America, researchers have developed a new painkiller from the poison skin of South America's dart frog that's 200 times more potent than morphine, yet completely non-addictive. Meanwhile, in Australia, scientists like Professor Tyler, one of the world's leading researchers on frogs, has also made a number of significant medical breakthroughs, such as the cure for gastric ulcers from the chemistry of Australia's now extinct gastric brooding frog. This, he says, is only the beginning. We've got a new surgical glue, for example, which, uh, upon which we now have a world patent, which we're working on with CSIRO, which is our government scientific organisation, to try and work out the exact structure of the molecule so this can be manufactured and used. But we've been able to show that uh, in the case of sheep, that we can stick cartilage, living cartilage together and get it completely healed in about six weeks. The range of benefits from these simple organisms is absolutely phenomenal. In the past, research leading to these types of discoveries meant that the frog's life was sacrificed. But after a visit to his acupuncturist, Dr. Tyler decided to use a similar technique. Using an electronic stimulus, he found he could effectively milk these required compounds from the animal without killing it. This frog is called Litoria splendida, the splendid or magnificent tree frog. And the sort of chemicals that it's got inside here are of enormous variety. There are some which are antibiotics. There's one which is a mosquito repellent, and that's why the frogs don't get beaten by mosquitoes, but I do. Um, we've got all sorts of compounds. Uh, generally, in each species, we get at least 15 compounds that are new to science. Then we've got to ask ourselves what they're for and try and find out what they do. There we are. There you can see the creamy white solution coming onto the outside. These are the chemicals. But just as scientists are starting to unlock the frog's secrets, entire species are disappearing right across the globe at a rate virtually unprecedented since the demise of the dinosaur. Some of the reasons explaining this extinction are already well known, pollution and loss of habitat being among the chief causes. But these alone can't explain the rate at which the frogs are disappearing. For Dr. Tyler though, as distressing as the loss of such a valuable animal is, the alarm bells are ringing not only for the demise of a species, but for the demise of the human race itself. Frogs are the highest form of life to lay naked eggs in water. Therefore, they're very, very good indicators of environmental health, and particularly aquatic environmental health. And if the frog numbers are going down, then it's a warning to other creatures such as us that there's something terribly wrong with our planet. Deep in the heart of New South Wales' Tidbinbilla Nature Reserve, scientists are battling to save one of the world's rarest frogs and Australia's most endangered, the corroboree frog. Gaining its name because its spectacular colourings mirror the face paint worn by Aborigines in their ceremonial dances or corroborees. The frog was once commonplace in this area, found in their thousands. Today, there are less than 100 left in the wild. Researchers recently identified that there are in fact two genetically separate species of corroboree frog. Both are ideally adapted to the alpine environment of Tidbinbilla's Mount Kosciuszko, home of the southern corroboree frog, and the surrounding homeland range of Mount Brindabilla, home of its cousin, the northern corroboree frog. 
because both species have antifreeze components in their body cells, they can safely hibernate during the highland's icy winter, returning unscathed during the spring for breeding. Though humanity's impact on the planet's wildlife is increasingly well documented, it is Mother Nature herself that can be just as devastating. During the 1980s, the nature reserve, like the rest of Australia, was in the grip of a major drought, and population numbers of both species plummeted. As if drought wasn't enough, a devastating bushfire in the summer of 2003 ignited, sweeping through the park and burning out large areas of the frogs' breeding grounds, killing at least 50% of their remaining adult population. But despite Mother Nature's fury, scientists were still suspicious that perhaps there was another reason for such a dramatic decline. 